Hey everyone, how y'all doing? Welcome and welcome back to my channel and welcome to a romance reading vlog. So these reading vlogs are always some of my favorite to make. So I thought that I would do another one because I had some romance books that I wanted to read and talk about with you all. And they are these ones. So we have Talk Flirty to Me by Libby Hart. This is a newer release. It came out at the end of May. It's also written by one of my very good friends. So I'm super excited to talk about this one with you. And then of course we have Book Lovers by Emily Henry in the very first romance vlog that I did on this channel I read Beach Read by Emily Henry. In the second one I also read People We Meet on Vacation. So I guess we're just keeping up the trend of me vlogging reading Emily Henry's books. I'm super excited about this one as well. And then of course we have The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This one has taken Book Talk in particular by Storm and I'm very intrigued to read it and see what I think. I hope you guys are excited to see a vlog of me reading these three romance books. But without further ado let's just get started with my spoiler free reading vlog for these three romance books. Okay, so I've started reading Talk Flirty to Me by Libby Hart. Oh, I am so excited about this book. I've already read it twice. I'm friends with the author, so I was able to read it last year and then read a revised version before it came out, and I adore this book with, like, every piece of my soul. It is literal genius. It is so much fun, so funny. The chemistry between the two main characters as well is just, like, the absolute best. But I got this in the mail yesterday and even though I'm in the middle of like a couple of other books right now, I just, I needed to pick this one up. I only got up to page 22, 23 because I had to eat dinner, but I'm loving it so far. I'm annotating it, which is just so much fun. I've highlighted so many things. There are a lot of orange tabs, which are my funny tabs because like I said, this book is hilarious. Like, Livy Hart is such like a comedic genius and I don't know how she does it honestly but I am absolutely obsessed. I even doodled a little flame in here. I need to find it because the love interest Sam is a firefighter. So I put in a little flame and I put hot because I mean it's hot. So I thought that was really cute and I'm just having a lot of fun with this book so far. If you don't know what this book is about, we do follow two main characters. It's a dual POV romance, which are some of my favorites. I love getting into the heads of both of the characters, but we follow Piper and Sam and they used to go out in high school, but then their relationship did not end well and it's been years since they've seen each other, but Piper is back in town because she's kind of broke and also her mom is pregnant, so she wants to be home to help her mom. And the whole family situation is like a cheaper by the dozen situation so it's like very chaotic and large and it's just so much fun to read about but she's basically in her hometown for the first time in a long time and so she ends up running into him at a bar and finds out that he has reconnected with her brother because they were best friends and that's kind of how she met him in the first place and he ends up being like invited to a bunch of their like family events and so she's kind of thrust back into his life and she's an audiobook narrator and she ends up getting an opportunity to audition for an audiobook role but she needs another person in order to audition and the only person that is available to help her is Sam. So he ends up auditioning with her, they get the job, and turns out that they have to narrate a very steamy erotic romance novel. Yeah, so like obviously things happen, they're stuck in like a recording booth all the time recording these very steamy scenes and it is just so good. That was an awful like all over the place description, we all know I'm bad at them at this point, but this book is just literally so much fun and I am so happy to be rereading it and annotating it. It's just literally so much fun. And also, if you guys get this book and you look in the acknowledgements, I'm in the acknowledgements. It's so cool. <laughs> I'm way too excited about that. But also this book is a mass market paperback. It is so tiny and I am not used to reading mass market paperbacks. They're not my like ideal book size to read. They're very cute though. Gotta admit, they're very cute. But I can already tell that like the farther I get into this book, the harder it's going to be to read it without cracking the spine. And I'm gonna have multiple copies of this book, like don't you worry. So like if I destroy it, it's not gonna be the worst thing in the world. Like I will have other copies of it, but I do try to keep my books in like as close to pristine condition as I can. But you know what, with this one, I want it to be well loved. I wanna just read it and love it and not worry about the condition of it. But I was actually sent this from a publisher, so thank you so much to Entangled for sending me this book. I am so excited to have it. But also, I have a talk flirty to me bookmark. 
But anyways, I love this book. I have lots of things I need to do today, but I think I'm gonna try to dedicate some time to reading this. Like I haven't even gotten to a Sam chapter yet. I'm only on chapter two and I love his chapters. I'm just, oh, I'm so excited. So if you guys have not yet heard about this book or picked up this book, go add it on Goodreads. Go buy yourself a copy. I will leave some links for it down below so you guys can go check it out. But I'm just, oh. I'm obsessed with it and also like when I opened this package yesterday I was freaking out and I was so giddy and my sibling was making fun of me and like with how excited I was you would think I was unboxing like my own novel I just I'm very very excited for Livy and I am just so incredibly proud of her we met through AMM and I'm just obsessed with her she's been such a good friend and I've loved watching her journey and you guys are not ready for her like she is going to take over the world with all these romance books that she's going to be publishing and I am just so excited about it so please do go pick up this book because it is literally genius it is amazing it's so good I'm on page 127 now of talk birdie to me and oh my god Oh my god. I mean, I've read this book before, twice, but for some reason, it gets me every single time. Like, this book is just genius. Like, it's literal genius. I have so many tabs in there, it's like not even funny. The part that I just read literally had me almost crying, and I'm pretty sure it was in both of the drafts that I've read of this book, and it still has me like on the verge of a mental breakdown. Yeah, like I even had to put in like a sticky note to like write down my full thoughts on like one line that one of the characters said because I just felt it to my core and I was like, oh my god. Livy Hart is so talented. This book literally hits all of the points. Like it's funny, it's sweet, it's romantic. We're not really at those parts yet, but like it's romantic, it's steamy, it's meaningful, it's heartfelt, it's sad at times too. It is comforting to me. It is just literally everything that I want in a book and more. And it's just making me so happy. Like annotating this book is bringing me all the joy that I knew that it would, you know? I'm telling you guys, you need to read this book. Like I would be saying that even if Livy wasn't one of my close friends like this is such a good book oh my god like I would be obsessed with it even if we weren't friends like objectively this is a fantastic book oh I'm just I'm never gonna be able to stop talking about it so I'm gonna go ahead and continue reading I'm, I'm having a blast I just wow wow I am now on page 258 of this book and tabs just keep on growing the annotations are getting more fun because we're getting into like the steamy like fun stuff the sexual tension is growing just overall it's it's getting real some of the last couple of chapters are like my absolute favorite chapters in the world like not just in this book but like in any book they're just so like beautifully crafted also if you needed an example of how funny Livy Hart is. The opening to chapter 20 is a prime example of it. It is, my lungs are suddenly less functional than a McDonald's soft surf machine. I mean, that's an iconic line if I've ever heard of one. <laughs> I'm literally having a blast reading this. I'm over halfway through now. I'm just, yeah, like I've been reading this for the past couple hours and I'm just... I love it so much. It's just as good as it was the last two times I read it. Oh, it makes me so happy. I'm gonna get back to reading because good stuff is coming up and I'm excited about it. I really don't have much else to say about this book that I haven't already said, but I'm on page 302. Literally so close to the finish line. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish it today because I'm hurting my hand with how much I'm like annotating this book and the way that I have to like hold this book. But I'm having just the absolute best time. Like it's giving me all of the like warm, happy, cozy feelings. And you know, even though there are some sad parts, I'm just like, these characters feel like home and I love them so much. And the steamy parts? have started happening and all I will say is that they are very good which I already knew but I'm just oh I am living the tabs in here are bringing me all the joy also sad to report that because I've been annotating so much killed my pink highlighter absolutely killed it if you guys saw my reading vlogs for my like reading slump where I was reading shatter me and annotating them I highlighted a lot with the pink highlighter especially in unravel me and i was like oh no this is gonna be the death of my highlighter but then you know it survived and i was like whoa surprising and it you know it lasted for quite a long time in here but then it slowly started to peter out so this one is basically dead now it still kind of works but it's like not satisfying to see because it's like barely there so i had to find a new highlighter that is not the same it's not as thick it's not the, the exact same color which i got to admit kind of hurts my soul i'm also using so many of my tabs like i'm quickly running out of 
orange tabs and pink tabs because this book is just so dang hilarious and so dang cute that that's like basically what all these tabs are but there's also some amazing lines in there and there's some sad moments parts that just like hit me right where it hurts this book literally has everything that i want and more in a romance novel like it is just oh, it is absolute perfection and I'm basically just saying the same things that I have been saying so far, but I just... If I have not convinced you yet to read this book, I don't know what I'm going to say that's going to be able to do it for you, but like, it is so good. This is my third time reading it and I'm still having like really like visceral reactions to things and I'm like, oh my god, no, like when bad things happen as if I haven't already read them. Like I know that they're coming and they still hurt and they still shock me and I just, oh. I feel all the things but i am gonna pause because i need to eat some food because i'm starving and then i think i'm gonna take a break for the day and come back to it tomorrow even though that is literally the last thing that i want to do but i have other things that i need to do today i did not mean to dedicate my entire day to reading this book but you know what i should have expected it i'm just popping in to say that i'm now on page 348 of this book and like i've mentioned a million times even though i've read this book multiple times already it hits the same like I am just as like excited and interested and invested as I was like the first time reading it I just got through a very very steamy amazing scene it includes the one bed trope so you know yeah and so I just wanted to report that the second highlighter that I had to move on to is now basically dead and I have precisely one package of tabs left and I'm on my last little section of pink tabs and there's probably like around 10 tabs left and I still have over like 140 pages of the book to go and I know that there's a hell of a lot left in here that I'm gonna want to tab using my pink I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get to the store to get more tabs today it's my dad's birthday what am i gonna do like do i just not read any more of this today in fear of like finishing the pink tabs like what do i do it's like i'm not the kind of person that just like tabs like once on a page like i'm a tab multiple times on a page kind of girl you know like i just have to tab every single moment i'm having a dilemma at the moment so at least for now i'm gonna take a break and do some writing but like it was my plan to finish this book today so like what do i do now knowing that like i don't have enough tabs i could do what i did for beach read a couple years ago where i just ended up using yellow tabs because i have a plethora of yellow tabs which are for like favorite moments so I could just use those and then like mark at what page I start using them so I can go back through and exchange them for pink tabs, although I haven't yet done that with Beach Read. But like I could just do that because I desperately do want to finish this book today. I can't get enough of it. Like I'm only stopping right now because I need to do some writing and also my neck hurts from like peering over my desk doing all my annotations. So like my, my neck needs a break. But I'm just, oh, I'm obsessed with this. I'm also just having such a fun time annotating and I'm doing like some different things I guess with annotating this time not really but I've been doodling a little bit mainly doodling the like eye emoji where it's like you know I've done quite a few of those and then also at like the beginning of like favorite chapters I've been putting a little sticky note just to like note that it's one of my favorite chapters i've had a couple of those throughout here as well so i'm just oh i'm having a blast it is so much fun it's also just so satisfying to see all these tabs you know okay i'm gonna go even though all i want to do is read this book like trust me when i say that this has been like almost the only thing on my mind for the past few days this book has me in a chokehold let me tell you <laughs> i have finished talk flirty to me oh my goodness let's talk about it oh my god okay so i finished this book last night and let's just do a tab reveal because this is absolutely ridiculous like i think this could possibly be my most tapped book maybe i'm not entirely sure but it's definitely rivaling my arc copy of counting down with you by tasha bouillon what are you kidding me that is so so many tabs look at all of those just what even wild so if i were to rate books which i don't anymore but if i were this would obviously be a five out of five stars absolutely adored it like 
I feel like I don't have anything new to say about it that I haven't already said, but I just, oh my god, the romance in this book is top tier. They're like one of my favorite couples of all time. I just, their chemistry, their, their banter with each other is like next level. It is so, so good, so funny. I feel like I just have to skip right to the epilogue. The epilogue is something so special and it makes me cry every single time that I read it. I believe it was in the first version that I read. I know for sure it was in the second one, but it's just like so freaking beautiful and it's so like masterfully written and it just flows so well and it's so sweet and it's so clever and yeah like I said it made me cry I wrote like a whole note at the end here for like how it made me feel and how much I love this book but let me tell you a dream came true for me last night when I finished this book so the very first time that I read this book all I dreamed about was being able to finish it you know close the back cover and just clutch it to my chest because that's what I do when I really love a book like I just finish it and immediately just like want to hug it and I couldn't do that when I first read it because it was a manuscript on my computer but now I like I gotta fulfill my dream last night of clutching this book against my chest and just like crying like my oh my god <laughs> I have no words. I love this book with my entire soul, clearly. I had so much fun annotating it. I literally went through all of my pink tabs. I had to go out and buy another pack. I was gonna buy multiple, but they only had one for some reason and like they weren't even where they were supposed to be. So I need to go to another dollar store and get more tabs. But yeah, so I had to resort to using yellow tabs because I went through the ones that I bought of the pink ones. So I'm gonna have to replace them now with the pink tabs later on. But yeah, I just, oh my God, this book. I, I've, if this whole section of the vlog has not already like convinced you to pick this book up, I don't know what's going to. I just, oh. I have no words. I have, I have no words. Read this book. <laughs> I also thought that I was going to completely destroy this book. Like, I thought there was going to be no way that I could read it without, like, creasing it like crazy. There's not a single crease on this spine. Like, I don't know how I managed to do that. There are, like, scuff marks in places. But that's bound to happen. That happens with paperbacks. But this book is so chunky because of all the tabs that are in here. And it makes me so happy. So this has now become one of those books that I just, like, love to hold. You know, it's just very satisfying to hold. I'm just rambling because I genuinely don't know what else to say about this book. The characters, the whole family dynamic, like there's a very, very strong family presence in this book and I love that. And it's kind of like a found family trope on Sam's side because he finds such comfort and solace in Piper's family and they're like his second home or like more like his real home really because he doesn't really get along with his parents like they're not they're not as close as like Piper's family is so he's kind of always felt like the Bellini household is also his home which I just adore like oh anytime he would mention something like that I just like melted into a puddle of tears pick up this book if you have not yet already it is absolute pure gold and I just I want to cry just thinking about it and I already want to reread it like this is like one of my favorite romances of all time and I realize that like you could say I'm biased because it's my friend's book but like truly like if I had read this without even knowing Libby Hart it would be an ultimate favorite like it's just it's so good I'm gonna cry I'm so proud of her okay so I'm gonna leave you but please 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 read this book <laughs> I'm reading book lovers and I definitely meant to update obviously the entire time I was reading this book but I was reading it in the other room and my family was home so like it was too loud to film but also like I just genuinely could not put this book down long enough to pick up the camera I'm not done yet I'm on page 316 so I'm, I'm nearly I'm nearly done but I took a break to eat some ice cream so I figured when I finished that it was the perfect time to quickly update all my feelings on this book before I went ahead and finished it so I read the prologue because I believe there's a prologue and the first chapter like a week or so ago I feel like and it just wasn't necessarily like grabbing me immediately so I ended up putting it down not reading for a few days picking other things up and reading those but then today I was like you know what I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna read this book oh I love it I'm loving it literally so much like I can't even describe to you how much one I love Emily Henry's writing style like there are some lines in here that are just so beautiful that I just have to like reread over and over again the romance in this out of this world it is so good i am obsessed with charlie amazing just absolutely amazing i always feel like whenever i talk about romance books i never have like proper coherent thoughts about them because i'm just like 
so giddy and so like enamored with them just oh it's so cute just all the like the little moments with them is adorable i love the sister relationship between our main character nora and her sister libby lots of great conversations happening around that the whole family dynamic is amazing the small town is so like weird and charming and cute and this whole book definitely feels like an homage to like hallmark movies and like just like this brand of like small town romances but it's just like doing it in such like a cute way where it's like very very aware of the tropes and everything to do with that kind of book and it's just like making it so exciting and like new and like kind of different also our main character is an agent and the love interest is an editor so there's that fun dynamic too it's kind of reminding me of beach read which is emily henry's first romance novel they're both writers and so we get scenes of them like writing and we get scenes of them like working on a book together and it's just oh my god it is so much fun to read about and i just love the dynamics they are very very similar personality wise and they complement each other so incredibly well and just like oh i don't know all the little moments like i said earlier with each other is just so good like some of the dialogue between the two of them like their banter just like how sweet they are with each other like oh my god i could cry just thinking about it there have been so many times where like i've just had to like look away from the book for a second and be like oh my god like you know like how people joke like on tiktok and stuff about how like sometimes they just have to put their book down and like look up and like talk to like the hidden camera or something or like you know talk as if like they're talking to an audience I was definitely doing that and I do that a lot but I was literally like pausing looking up from the book looking at nothing like just at a wall and being like oh my god or being like oh my god I can't do this like this book is insane so far I'm not loving it more than Beach Read I have a feeling that Beach Read will firmly forever be my favorite of Emily Henry's just because it's about writers which I adore and there was just something so magical about that book and when I read it but this one I think is becoming a pretty close second I love people we meet on vacation which is her second romance novel but I feel like it's my least favorite out of the three right now like I'm just so completely like in love with this book and I wish I had more like productive things to say about it like more eloquent things to say but I just don't because I desperately just want to sit here and finish it so I'm gonna do that and I'll I'll get back to you but it's just <laughs> it's good it's really good <laughs> I'm on page 352 and I swear to god I swear to god if this book ends how I think it might end right now I'm never forgiving Emily Henry oh mm hmm 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 my bad i never should have doubted emily henry never not for a second what was wrong with me i don't know i think i was just caught up in the feelings and emotions of this book but that didn't do it was so good it was so cute it just ah everything about it was perfect i i'm literally at like a loss for words i never know what to say after finishing a romance novel because i'm just feeling all of the things but i really 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 enjoyed this book i also loved reading the part at the end behind the book in like the reader's guide because she did talk about hallmark movies and like the inspiration for this book came from hallmark movies and like the what if questions she was asking about the movie she was watching love that adore it literally so much this book was so good. I'm- I, I feel sufficiently lonely while also just like feeling so fulfilled and happy. I just- romance books literally make me feel every single emotion under the sun and I love it. Okay, so I've started The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. I meant to update earlier, I really, really did. But I'm on page 291 now, nearly done the book. I'm putting it down for a minute though because my eye is hurting me a little bit. So I need to take a bit of a break. But I wasn't sure how I was feeling about it at the beginning. There was no particular reason why I might not have been enjoying it. Um, maybe a bit of the writing style, I don't know. But there was nothing like glaringly wrong with it to begin with. But I'm into it now, it's good. I really like the dynamic between our two main characters adam and olive it's a fake dating book which is obviously my favorite trope ever and i'm really enjoying it in this book as well i feel like i don't have like that much to say about this book i'm not loving all the science talk but like that was to be expected i knew that it was a science book i just don't like science so that's like definitely like my least favorite part of the book but that's just like a personal thing and again like i said like i knew going into it that it was going to be science heavy it's not too too bad but it's just like there and i kind of like 
I don't like glaze over it, but like I'm not paying the most attention while reading. And also, I believe this book is like based off of like Raylo fan fiction, like from Star Wars. I do not like Star Wars, so I'm not like overly familiar with this ship that people have. I know the characters, but I like literally know nothing about them. So the only connection I can make is how close Adam looks to Adam Driver, who plays Kylo Ren. That's about it. Although knowing that it's Raylo fan fiction, having the actual mentions of Star Wars in this kind of do bother me a little bit. It just seems a little too on the nose, you know what I mean? I'm like, if you're gonna make something that people like know is like based off something or inspired by something, like maybe don't mention those specific things in the book. That's just like a personal thing that, that bothers me a little bit. I just, I don't love when books do that. But like beyond my like, slight little nitpicking things. I am really enjoying this book. I just finished some of the the steamy parts and I feel like the steamy scenes in this book are quite like famous. I feel like everyone talks about them so I feel like I knew a bit about them before even touching this book or deciding that I wanted to read it. And like overall like it wasn't bad but there were definitely some choice things that happened like some choices were made that i maybe wouldn't have done that just like <laughs> don't fully make sense and kind of just like take you out of the scene a little bit and it's like okay but like why do you have to say that you know to piggyback off of my nitpicking though because i just remembered this as i was talking about that is how many times must our main character describe adam as being large or big or broad sometimes large and broad or big and broad in the exact like same descriptor should be like big and broad it's like okay we get it how many times must you describe how large he is how many times must you describe how tall he is like once or twice is enough maybe do it in a different way but just like continually saying he's so large he's so big he's so tall it's just like why like it feels like a little like ridiculous to me and it, like to me it kind of reads a little cartoonish or like I know that Adam Driver who this is based off of is like quite a tall like broad dude like I know that but like just the way she's like describing it so often makes it so cartoonish to me where I'm like picturing like like I don't know there was one part where she was like his fingers are too big and for some reason in my mind I'm picturing like like Shrek level fingers <laughs> like like how big shrek's fingers are you know just like huge <laughs> and i'm like tempted to look up pictures of adam driver to look at his fingers to see if like that specific thing was based off adam driver because i'm just like in what world do you in what world you know i don't know but overall, I am enjoying this book. I do see why it's so hyped up so far. It's not so far, so far. I'm not gonna make any judgments yet, I'm not finished. But so far, it's not like an all-time favorite romance. Like, it's not knocking like any other book off the list, you know? But I am really enjoying it. I'm going to finish it today, which is good because that's what I wanted to do. I started it today as well. Like, I've just been sat here reading for the past however many hours. And I can see myself rereading it in the future, which I guess is really all that I can ask for. But like I said, I'm gonna take a break because my eyeball is hurting me and I don't want to straighten my eye too much. So I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna eat some ice cream because why not? And then I'm gonna come back and finish this book. Okay, I've just finished The Love Hypothesis. I cannot believe that I read this in basically a sitting wild. I really, really enjoyed it. I really, really loved the main characters and their relationship with each other. I thought it was so cute. I love the kind of trope where like the guy falls first and falls hard and that was very prevalent in this book and kind of also very obvious as well even if it was not obvious to our main character but I loved that. It just had like all of the good tropes you know and it was a really fun time and I can see why everybody loves it so much. Yeah I don't know it was just it was a good time. I had a really really good time reading this book despite the many times the love interest is described as large. <laughs> But I'm really happy that I read it. I'm really happy that I loved it because I think there was a great potential for me not to like this book just due to how hyped up it is. But I did really, really enjoy it. Okay, so I have now read all three of the romance books that I set out to read for this reading vlog. And obviously I loved all of them. You guys know you just watched the video, obviously. But I absolutely adored all of them. And I was about to say that I was gonna rank them for you in order of my favorites, but they're already in my order. This is just how I grabbed them. This is how I'm holding them. And it just so happens that they're in my order of favorites. My favorite was obviously Talk Flirty to Me by Libby Hart. I feel like I am slightly biased in this because I am such good friends with the author, but I genuinely feel like even if I was 
wasn't friends with Libby Hart that it would still be my favorite out of these three. It just absolutely blows me away every single time I read it. And then it's Book Lovers by Emily Henry, also really, really amazing. And then The Love Hypothesis was also really, really good, but didn't quite live up to the other ones, but still really, really great. So that concludes my romance reading vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up. Comment down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought about them, or if you're going to be picking any of them up, I'd really love to know. Subscribe if you have not yet already, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!